Alright guys, I told you I'm gonna keep those videos coming. Actually, today we're gonna talk about medication administration. And today's video is sponsored by Star Wars, aka the sword. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Actually, I was just playing with my son. He gave me the sword. He found it in the backyard. I don't think it works. Oh, oh my god, what is that? Listen, let's focus on nursing, alright? Let's focus on Anklex. So in today's question, we're going to talk about medication administration. But listen, if you like those type of videos, please take a second. Click that share button. Just share it on your social media, on your Facebook, because a lot of people, I mean, I know you're a nurse. You've got a lot of nursing friends, and I bet that they want the knowledge. So please share the knowledge, share the love, all right? If you like those videos, click the thumbs up if you're watching this on YouTube. But if you're watching this on Facebook, I like the hearts. Give me a heart, please, all right? So listen, as always, with NCLEX question, we're gonna read the subject of the question. This is in blue. We're gonna read the subject of the question three times. The first time, it's general reading. The second time, we're gonna pick up keywords. And the third time, we're gonna rephrase the question in our own words. Listen, you've gotta learn this. You've gotta practice this over and over and over again for fun with every single question that you solve. Don't waste questions. With every single question, you have to follow this strategy, all right? So two days post-complex abdominal surgery, the patient developed fever. The ID team prescribed IV piperacillin, 1.5 grams every six hours. What action will the nurse do before administering the first dose of antibiotics, all right? So this is the first, the first time we'll read the question. The second time, I'm gonna highlight keywords in red. So two days post-complex abdominal surgery. Listen, two days, it's very important, especially in terms of hemorrhage and infection. Hemorrhage and infection, like internal bleeding and infection, it's very important because if it was like less than 24 hours or at the 24 hour mark and a patient is having fever or not fever, but high heart rate, I won't think about, uh, I won't think about infection. What I would think about is about, I would think about hemorrhage, all right? So keep that in mind. So the, the cutoff is 24 to 48 hours. So at a 48 hour mark, I would think of infection. Less than 24 hours, I would think about hemorrhage in terms, I mean, in case you have high heart rate. So two days post complex abdominal surgery, the patient developed fever. So fever, that's a keyword. The ID team, which is the infectious disease team, prescribed IV pepercillin, 1.5 gram. Listen. Every time you see a medication in a question, just highlight it as a keyword. Anytime you see a medication or a drug in a question, you highlight it as a keyword. So every six hours, what action will a nurse take before administering the first dose of antibiotics? The first dose, that's a keyword as well. Listen, with NCLEX questions, sometimes you, have, you only have one keyword, but sometimes you've got plenty of them, all right? So always limit your keywords to like three or four, because keywords are an indicator of what the examiner is trying to ask you about, all right? Sometimes those are confusing and there's a lot of traps along the way. That's why you need to pay strict attention when you are rephrasing the question because you want to understand what the examiner is trying to ask of you. So listen, if I don't want to look at the question and I just want to rephrase the question, I would say from what I understood is that a patient two days after surgery Massive abdominal surgery. He started having fever. The ID team put him on antibiotics, right? Pepercillin. And then, what do I need to do before I give the first dose? All right? As simple as that. What do I need to do before giving the first dose? So I'm going to read the options. Number one, review allergies. Do I review allergies before giving first dose of any type of medication? In this case, pepercillin. I guess yes, of course, all right? So I will keep this option. I'm gonna read through the other options. For me, if I read this, this is the right answer, but there could be a better answer. And what we call them, what we try to call them on the NCLEX is the umbrella effect. What does that mean? That means this could be right, that could be right, and there could be another option, which is the umbrella effect, which could add the same answers under one option. And in this case, your last option would be the right answer, right? That's why you need to go through all the options. Option number two, inform provider if respiratory rate is less than 10 per minute. What do you think? 
I mean, in general, generally speaking, any respiratory rate less than 10 per minute, you need to, to inform your provider. But in this case, is this relevant, right? I highlighted my keywords, right? Is respiratory rate less than 10 relevant to this question? I mean, am I talking about maybe like opioids? Am I talking about narcotics? Am I talking about sedation? What am I talking about? I'm talking about piperacillin. Is respiratory depression a side effect of piperacillin? It's not. So this option is irrelevant to the question. That's why I stay away from it. In general, it's true, you need to inform a provider because this is bradypnea, but in relation to this question, this is irrelevant. Number three, pre-medicate with two milligram of dexamethasone. What do you think? If I'm giving first dose of piperacillin, do I need to pre-medicate with steroids? You tell me. What do you think? I guess not. If it was me, I mean, it's never pre-medicate. I mean, if I'm giving like high alert chemotherapy that has high incidence of allergic reactions, anaphylaxis, yes, I would give pre-medication with steroids. In this case, piperacillin does not have any huge hypersensitivity or anaphylaxis reported, right? So definitely not, okay? I'm gonna stay away from number three. Number four, assess the patient's blood pressure in supine and upright position. What do you think? First dose of piperacillin. Do I need to assess blood pressure? Does piperacillin affect blood pressure? It doesn't. Listen, if I'm giving antihypertensives, digoxin, this and that, yes, 100%. And the patient is reporting any signs of orthostatic hypotension, definitely check the patient's blood pressure in a supine position, and then after a minute, ask them to sit up, or ask them to sit up, and after a minute, check their blood pressure again, and see if there's a difference, then you can diagnose the patient as, as orthostatic hypertension. In this case, this is irrelevant. The only relevant answer is number one, which makes total, total sense. Listen, we're gonna talk about medication administration. So what are the five rights? Nah. Six rights? Nah. Listen, the blueprint for the ANCLEX, you've got seven rights. Seven medication rights that you need to check before you administer a medication to a patient, all right? First right. Right patient, right medication, right time, right dose, right route, right site, right documentation. Listen, what's the difference between right route and right site? You pay close attention. This might be the next NCLEX question that you might face and freeze. Listen, right route means if it's IVPO or IM. Right site, some medication you cannot give as peripheral IV. You need to give them in a like peripheral central line or a central venous catheter. So you need to pay attention to that. A lot of people don't know that. A lot of my students don't know that. And when I break the news for them, they are like, oh my God. Yes, of course. Listen, I hope you enjoyed this question. This is, you know, just a routine question. I just wanted to shed some lights on medication administration. I hope you like it. If you like this type of videos, please give me a heart on Facebook. Give me a thumbs up on YouTube share this video, share it with your friends, and listen, if you did not grab my ebook yet, you've gotta grab it. This ebook is second to none. What I put in this ebook is experiences of hundreds and hundreds of students. And what do I mean by that? Every single student of mine, when they get out of the test center, they give us a call, either myself or any of the coaches, and guess what? We ask them about their experience and this and that, but then we ask them a very unique question. Listen. What are the topics that you saw on your real NCLEX test? And then they share with us the topics. What do I do? I take a screenshot and I put all topics in this amazing ebook. So this ebook can include screenshots of a lot of, you know, topics, experiences from our nursing students. And I would like you to get this ebook for free. All you need to do is click, no, first share this video. And then there's a link at the bottom, just click it. You put your email and your name and you can download this for free, all right? I don't wanna send you a hard copy, it's 2019. I'll just email it to you within seconds, all right? Listen, love your face and until next time, be an alpha slice. I'll try so hard to fade away.